Howdy folks, it's Zack, and before I got started on my Jedi Knight walkthrough of the Jedi Knight storyline in Star Wars The Old Republic, I wanted to go ahead and do a quick little pre-tutorial on some of the things that you can do to put together for yourself that'll make your life easier as you level up. Now this is mostly for returning players. If you've already played through the game before, then you already have access to maybe at least one type of crafter, uh, some extra cash with a max level character, etc. Things like that. Uh, but if you're a new player, pay attention to some of the things that are coming up in this video, and this will give you ideas of things that you can be setting up as you play through your first character to make leveling up your next character that much faster and that much easier. So here's a few tips. Uh, first up, I want to talk a little bit about your HUD. If you don't know this already, you can go ahead and change the default HUD by using the interface editor, okay? So to access that, you're literally just pressing this plus sign here on your hotbar number one and opening up the interface editor. You can type in a name for that uh, HUD configuration and then save it. So right here, you can actually see this is one of the ones that I set up for myself. Uh, the default version looks like this. This is the one that you start off with in the game. And I literally, any character I use, I can just tap a button and I have my HUD configuration set up for them. The same thing works for keybinds as well. If I go to preferences and go to the second tab that says keybinds, I could type in all the button configurations that I want in the game. So if you look down here on my second hotbar, you'll see that they're all linked down to the number pad. Okay, that's linked to my mouse. Uh, I have a uh, configurable mouse that's for gaming and rating, and I absolutely love it. And I went ahead and just put in the button combinations that I have linked to my mouse down here. And that way I just have more at my fingertips. So one of the cool things is that after you put all that in and all your targeting buttons for you know raid markers and such like that, you can go to key binding import and export and just go ahead and save it with a name. All right, and you can see that I have up here Zach one standard. Once you save it, all you gotta do on any other character you ever make again is just hit apply and bang. All those buttons fill in, no need to type it out, no need to do it over again. But let's talk about saving some money here a little bit. So if you look around here, this is my player house on Nar Shada, okay? I've got some nice decorations in here, but honestly, this is more for the utility of having a house. So once you reach level 10, if you're a new player, you don't know this, but if you reach level 10, you will go to the fleet. And from there, in one of the areas on the fleet, you can go ahead and do a quick little miniature quest to get a house. Uh, they're pretty cheap. If you get one on Coruscant or uh, Drum and Koss, which are the two base planets for the two different factions, but I would actually recommend getting one that's faction neutral. So I'm gonna open up my strongholds tab here. You can do that by clicking U. And if you look on my personal tabs here, you can see that I have three houses uh, on this server. And the one I'm recommending is Nar Shaddaa. And you can see by the symbol here that it is faction neutral. It can be used by both factions. That's just gonna save you a few extra credits as you go down the way. And when you do the quest, you get access to a few different vendors that can sell you items for your house. Now, the, what they sell you is not really the important part. The important part is that they are a vendor. The other two things you get automatically out of that pack is a legacy stronghold storage container and a mailbox. Between those three things, you have a really good base for as you level up in the game. You're gonna get a lot of junk in your bags as you level up, and at the touch of a button, I can literally touch uh, my stronghold button and hit travel. I can go immediately to my house, sell, or trade or mail or store anything in my bags and then immediately click exit area and go right back to where I was standing on any planet that I was on as long as I wasn't in an instance so you know utilities guys utilities next up I want to talk a little bit about uh, legacy sets so if you uh, have are returning to the game and you have access to these four sets of armor from the Galactic Starfighter pack that came out a while back. Uh, there's four sets of boxes that you get that uh, inside of them contains a set of legacy gear. All right, and they look like this. All right, here's a little trick for you guys. If you haven't been doing this already, while you level up, when you need to make a series set of upgrades and you're on the fleet and you're purchasing mod after mod after mod to put into your gear, don't put them into a regular piece of gear. Put them into legacy gear. All right, so these sets here, I actually made these last summer when the com vendors were selling uh, prototype, which is the blue quality uh, level of gear. I would buy a set of comms and I would throw it into a set of legacy gear. And now I have leveling sets for any character I make 
at any time. All right, I literally can just send all these sets over to them. They stay in their inventory, and I use them as I level up that character. So the trick here is you buy it once, and then you use it forever. All right. Uh, a lot of people will spend a lot of time and a lot of energy repurchasing items that if you just find a good way to save it through legacy gear, you don't need to keep remaking the wheel and you don't need to keep spending stuff. And overall, that'll make your characters more money in the end. Now I do have another tab here full of gear that I do want to show you. These are items that I've crafted. So if you're looking to save money in this game as well, and you've already made a level 1 character, uh, or excuse me, made a full max level character of at least one type of crafting, learn to craft. Uh, craft whatever you can. You don't have to have everything right at once, but if you can craft what you need for yourself, you'll obviously save a lot more money. That's really kind of a no-brainer. But the peripherals here, I'm just going to show you really quick. Uh, I have all my armor pieces covered for most of the leveling process, and then these peripherals, the ear pieces, implants, relics, and the modifications for my saber and my offhand, I just like to make those in advance. Uh, that way I don't have to stop what I'm doing and go to the fleet to purchase uh, a lower quality item. I just have it right here in my inventory ready to rock and roll for when I need it. Now if you have legacy weapons and you have a lot of them, do the same thing with your armor that you do. Uh, do the same thing with the weapons that you do with the armor. Put it into legacy gear, save those things up, and again you'll save yourself a lot of cash and a lot of money. Alright, that covers the gear part of things. I do want to show you a few items on the legacy menu. So. Here I go ahead and type Y, and as soon as you've made one character and he's gotten at least up to chapter 3, they have the ability to start a legacy. Okay, so I'm going to click on my family tree here and you'll see what I'm talking about. So all the characters that I make on a server are tied with a same last name and they share a legacy level. As I level up all my characters, that level increases. Okay. So if you only have one character, but he does a lot, and especially in raids, you'll see that level skyrocket very quickly. It basically goes up through social events and completing achievements. All my characters here are tied to that. So that legacy gear that I showed you earlier can be used by all of these different guys. Now, there's also unlocks that you can get in your legacy level that can work for all your characters. If you're looking to spend some cartel coins or some cash, this is the very first place I would tell you to start spending it. The ones that I would really focus in on are Rocket Boost and leveling that all the way up to full. Okay, That one is just an amazing option uh, for travel. You can see it down here on my hotbar. Uh, I use that. It's on a 30 second cooldown timer. So about, you know, uh, when you're doing the leveling up process, there's going to be areas you can't mount up. And having Rocket Boost will save you time. You know, and time is money. Also, a uh, Legacy of Fleet Pass is a really good option. And then also, let's see, where is it? Legacy of Travel. Okay, these six ones right here, really good. What that'll do is that'll reduce the cooldown on your quick travel options from uh, going from bind point to bind point or your fleet passes. I keep those two air, two uh, quick travel options right down here, and. You know, a six second cooldown means I can use it as many times as I want. That doesn't sound all that great, but let me put the scenario out there for you. So here you are, you just finished up a quest, you need to get back to the quest giver in a hurry. You can click that quick travel button and go right there. But up, now you realize you went to the wrong spot. Well, if you didn't unlock all the options, then there's actually quite a long timer on this, uh, about 30 minutes, or I think the lowest it can uh, get as a subscriber is 10 minutes without the unlocks. And you don't want to be sitting around or having to travel or spend the money. This basically makes your travel free from bind point to bind point. Okay, so definitely worth getting. The other thing I want to mention on character specific perks. Okay, so there's a difference when you click here on global unlocks and other. These are things that go to all your characters. So that's the highest value unlocks you can get. With character perks, these are character specific, but there's three that I do want to mention. First up is improved speeder piloting. All right, this lets you use speeder piloting at level one. If you're a returning player, you probably have mounts in your bag from the moment you start up a new character in your mailbox. All right, so grabbing this is a good idea. However, I would mention to unlock this one using cash and not cartel coins. Uh, it costs 40,000 credits to unlock with cash, which is nothing if you're a returning player, but it costs a whopping 400 plus cartel coins to unlock it with cartel coins. Now these guys up here, these all have to do with your companions. If you're new to the game, 
as you level up in the game, and this is different than a lot of MMOs, you will get companions that share the storylines with you. And those companions can do different roles for you. They can heal, they can tank, or they can do damage. The higher their affection, and well, it's not really called affection anymore, it's called influence. The higher your influence with them, the better they do it. They heal, they heal better, they tank harder, and they you know, do more damage. They also, it also affects their ability to craft. So if you are sending them off to make something for you, they will do it faster and have a more likely chance to crit. So these two options here, this is a Legacy of Altruism, which increases the influence gain from companion gifts, and this one is for increasing influence through conversations. I recommend getting both. And these, I do recommend using cartel coins for. Each box that you see here that I have unlocked is 25 cartel coins apiece. So all six of these will only cost you 150 cartel coins. Uh, that goes all the way through all the companions you can ever get in the game. And if, you've, if you're returning, uh, but you don't know what companions look like at level 65, you can have dozens of companions now. And as you level up, companion gifts drop everywhere. So having these options unlocked, gets the best bang for your buck in every conversation that you do and every gift that you give forever on that character very valuable especially guys if you're making a crafter i definitely recommend you know keeping a companion by your side investing into them and don't forget it doesn't matter if they like you or they hate you their influence is going up okay and that makes them better at what they do so don't be afraid to make those dark side options last but not least i want to show you one last thing and this is purely optional uh, and this is for returner players, new players. We're going to talk a little bit about this as you level. But you can find on all the different planets something called Datacrons. And Datacrons increase your stats for your character by either 2, 4, or 10. So, for instance, my main damage stat on any character of any class is called Mastery. Some of these Datacrons out there will increase your Mastery rating permanently for that character. That's a free permanent boost it's not tied to your gear and it's not tied to your level you just get it by finding these datacrons now you can see how many datacrons i have here and you can start kind of making a mental picture on just how much this can help all right so there's uh, mastery presence and endurance and as you level up it's a good idea that when you're on a planet to just go ahead and find these and unlock these uh, it takes a little extra time yes but it benefits all the characters on your legacy. This is completely legacy-wide, the Datacron unlocking. All right? And I'll also confirm this for you, too. If you have a character here that is eligible for transfer, and you transfer them over to another server, all the Datacrons that you've unlocked travel with you. Okay, So if I, un I have unlocked them all here, if I send this character over to a different server, even if I ever already have other characters on that server, they all merge. Everybody gets all the Datacrons. It's a permanent stat boost. Again, this is a you do it once and you unlock it for everybody forever kind of thing. So I do recommend doing it. It shows you a different side of the game, but more importantly, it gets you a bunch of extra stats that you'll never have. Uh, my character right now is pretty much naked, and he'll still be running around doing plenty of damage all the way up until he can use that first armor set at level 7. Uh, last but not least, I do want to talk a little bit about the gear that I'm wearing on my tune right now. This is, uh, this is pretty much for everybody. Guys, I'm going to tell you, it sucks to come into the game and be wearing scrub gear. That level 1 outfit that you get on any character class just looks like hell. Uh, I hate it. So, I do recommend if you do have access to some cartel coins to go ahead and make some purchases in the cartel market. And that way you can make a character look pretty cool for your first go around. Uh, I already set up two outfits, and this is again a cost saving measure by the way guys. Uh, outfit designer is using these tabs you can look up a video and see how to use it specifically but if you set your outfits up at the start of the game you're only gonna pay 350 credits to, to unlock all seven slots okay if you wait till later it's gonna cost you exponentially more and I'm talking 30 to 40 thousand credits per tab now at max level that's really not so bad but that's an awful big drain on the funds uh, if you are waiting too long. So I say, you know, if you have the ability to unlock some uh, some outfits, let me show you equipment. Uh, so here are the two that my character is wearing right now. He's got the Blade Master's lightsaber, which I unlocked for 500 cartel coins, and he's got Thexen's robes. Uh, I've also unlocked these for all my characters. 
yeah, I just had extra cartel coins, so I was like, you know, why not? Uh, so, anyway, you know, unlock them. That way your character, he doesn't look like a scrub in all his uh, starter cutscenes. I hate that. It's purely optional, it's purely aesthetic, it's purely for you, but as you'll see me go through the storyline of the Jedi Knight, you'll see me use a couple different outfits, and like I said, if you're looking to save some money, just set them up right at the start. Uh, that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, go ahead and like this page, and I have a new friend referral link down at the bottom. Feel free to use it, guys. If you've been on the fence about playing Star Wars The Old Republic, you'll see through my upcoming video series that this game is awesome. Uh, I've been playing it since the beta. I absolutely love it, and I want people to get excited and revved up for it as well. If a lot of this stuff seems to be over your head, watch the video series about the Jedi Knight storyline, and you'll see me talk about a lot more of these things in depth as I go through the storyline of the Jedi Knight. And uh, we'll talk about unlocking companions, we'll talk about you know what that leveling up process looks like, we'll talk about ways to save money as you level, we'll go through all of it, and we'll also have a really good time with the story. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, yeah, I'm Zach, I'm on the Harbinger, and I will see you soon.